In the last video, I talked about how to design schematics in Quartus. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to simulate these schematics and how to basically get a truth table out of them. So here I have um, not really a schematic, but the beginning of a schematic with input variables X and Y and output variable Z. So I'm going to complete this by adding a gate. Let's add an XOR gate, exclusive OR, to this function. Make sure it's connected. Let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, and now we have our schematic completed. Z equals exclusive OR of X and Y. So what I have to do before I actually simulate is compile the whole design. And to compile it, I go up to this blue run button, the arrow that says start compilation, and I'll start it. This process usually takes a couple of minutes um, because it's developing a whole bunch of files that you're going to need to actually design a little integrated circuit out of this design. So it takes a while even for really simple designs, um, especially the first time that you compile. So I'll skip ahead to the end. Our design is done compiling. We got a bunch of a bunch of warnings along the way, but it wasn't anything critical. You don't need to worry about those warnings. So everything is compiled. Now what we're going to do to actually simulate this is go to File, New, and under Verification Debugging Files, you'll see University Program VWF for Vector Waveform File. So we'll click on that, and then it brings up another window with um, a timing diagram, actually. This, diagram, this timing diagram runs all the way from 0 to 1,000 nanoseconds. You can set that to be whatever you want. Um, usually I just set it to be 50 nanoseconds by going to Set End Time under Edit, and then End Time 50, select Nanoseconds, and now the end time is 50 nanoseconds. What we need to do is, in a timing diagram similar to what you would see in class, we need to insert all of the inputs and outputs on the left here. So in order to do that, we say edit, insert, then insert node or bus. Don't pay attention to any of this stuff. Just click on node finder. And then under node finder, click on list. And you'll see all of the inputs and outputs in the whole circuit. Select all of them and click move. And now these are the selected nodes that we'll be using. Click OK, OK, and they'll all appear in the simulation timing diagram. What we need to do is have this set up so that all of the values of X and Y are represented in the timing diagram. So what we need to do is make them switch on and off from 0 to 1, but with different time periods. So X needs to have double the period of Y. If there was another variable, say W, X, and Y, uh, y would have the shortest period, x would have double that period, and then w would, w would have double the period of x. So for y, I'm going to click on that, and then there's a little icon here with a clock. It says overwrite clock. We click on that, and we give it a period. Let's just set the period to 10 nanoseconds. That will work out well. So we can see now y switches off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on. And then for x, we'll say overwrite clock and set the period to double what it was for y, 20. And now we can see that we have all four states represented. x is 0, y is 0, x is 0, y is 1, x is 1, y is 0, x is 1, y is 1. An easier way to visualize that is to click on both of these input variables, right click, say grouping, group, and now name that group inputs. And now it will show on the inputs 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and that repeats. So it'll actually show you what the binary values are uh, as the input to your circuit. Z is still undefined. It has this crosshatch, meaning that we haven't actually simulated anything yet. It could be anything. So what we need to do now is actually simulate. And there's an error in Quartus Prime Lite that you need to go fix annoyingly before 
you run any sort of simulation. So we go to simulation, simulation settings, and now you'll see all of the code here that runs the simulation. And you need to go to the fifth line down and you see this dash no vopt, and you have to delete that. Uh, that's a bug and it causes an error and it won't let your simulation run, so you have to go delete that every time. So if you go and delete that, now we click on run functional simulation and this functional simulation will take a little bit of time to run you have to save this waveform file first and now we're running the simulation again this is a very simple circuit but just because of uh, how complex quartus is it takes a little while to run and now we have our output so what you can see here is that when x and y are zero and zero the output z is zero. When x and y are zero and one, we get a one for z. One and zero, we get a one for z. And one and one, we get a zero. So this is the correct exclusive or function. All right, now let's talk about how to simulate more complicated circuits. Let's add a second function, exclusive nor. So this is the opposite of exclusive or, and I'll add a second output, which I'll just call f, and I'll make the inputs the same, x and y. Now you have to recompile your design. All right, our compilation of the new, more complex circuit is successful. So now I'm going to go back to my waveform file here. And as you can see, I'm missing one of the outputs. So I need to go back to insert. And I need to insert F into the timing diagram. So I still have the same inputs, but now I have two outputs, Z and F. Z was still exclusive OR, but F is exclusive NOR. And now I can run the functional simulation. And get the outputs. As you can see, Z and F here are complements of each other. Whenever Z is zero, F is one. So here Z is one and F is zero. Here Z is zero and F is one. So F is the complement of the the exclusive nor to z's exclusive or function.